Hi, I'm Janet Salmons, and I'd like to share a presentation I made at the Qualitative Research on Organization and Management Conference, e-research on e-entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs in the digital age. So, why conduct this study? I was curious about emerging e-entrepreneurial practices, and that was fed by a conversation I had with my niece about how connected and collaborative women bloggers are in her area, personal finance. I was originally planning to study women and technology incubators, but I decided instead to look at women entrepreneurs online. So my interest in e-interview research, given recent books and development of a number of models, meant I wanted further experimentation with conducting online interviews. So in this presentation, I'm giving a very brief overview of the study and how I collect the data online. So the study, um, it was an exploratory, qualitative study designed to surface emerging approaches so that I could identify trends and themes for future study. There's little existing scholarship that has looked at the combination of women and e-entrepreneurship. There's literature about women entrepreneurs or online entrepreneurs. But I wanted to surface the ways that those approaches and trends might relate to one another. So in this study, I used situational analysis, a postmodern grounded theory approach. By looking at the situation of inquiry, as Adele Clark describes, I could explore interrelationships between human, which are the entrepreneur, their partners, allies, customers, etc., and the non-human aspects which would be the technology of the situation. This methodology encourages us to ask who and what are in the situation. What elements of the situation make a difference? The visual nature of this approach fits with my own visual communication and visual research style. Situational analysis makes use of three kinds of maps, situational and arenas, and positional maps. These maps situate aspects of the research phenomena by not only mapping the data, but by calling out for discovery of otherwise unseen relationships. For the sample, I used a stratified purposive sample looking for a maximum variation within two categories. I had 10 participants, about half in each category, and one who has multiple businesses in each category. So one is called real world e-entrepreneurs, the other digital e-entrepreneurs. Real world entrepreneurs use online communications with vendors and customers, partners and allies for promotions and advertising However, their products and services are physical and in some cases inherently face-to-face, -face, delivered or purchased on location. The digital e-entrepreneurs also use online communications, but are in the business of selling electronic products and services. So the 10 participants for this initial study included a variety of entrepreneurs including artists and individuals involved with travel, architecture, therapy, writing, and personal finance. So the interviews, the primary data collection source, one-on-one -on -one interviews with related email as needed for follow-up. I also used information from participants' blogs, social media, or websites. There were semi-structured interviews with five main open-ended questions and then probes and follow-up questions that emerged from within the conversation. 
These interviews were conducted in Adobe Connect. Now, the participants could see me on a webcam, since most of them revealed a lot about themselves online, including photographs and videos of their work. This allowed for some parody and also helped to develop rapport. So using the language of the QRM conference, the webcam allowed me to be embodied as a researcher. Slides with main questions gave a visual cue and helped us stay focused. Then with one slide, uh, an interactive diagram allowed for a live and uh, engaging visual representation of participants' comments. So one of the maps of results is a positional map. This allows us to look at, on one axis, the time and response of the technologies chosen. So we have, on one end, synchronicity, which means a full attention and engagement of both parties in real time. Uh, there, we can see that the main use was with active, current customers and collaborators through phone calls or Skype conversations. Then we have the synchronous, which uh, describes events that are in real time, but may not necessarily involve full engagement of participants who may have other uh, activities going on. So web events like webinars may be uh, viewed uh, synchronously, but uh, participants may be involved with other communications at the same time. Um, similarly, in near synchronous, we have the expectation that the response will come soon. So this describes kind of an elongated conversation, uh, an ongoing conversation. And then in the asynchronous, we have the anytime communication. So we can see that the majority of the kinds of technologies used by the entrepreneurs participating in this study uh, were asynchronous. And they use different technologies for their immediate network than for the wider network or the general public. Another thing you can notice by looking at the technologies that are listed here is that most of them are free or very inexpensive. So once you have made the investment of an internet connection and uh, a computer or mobile device, uh, you can uh, communicate using these kinds of tools. Then, with what Adele Clark calls the ordered situational map, um, we have a chance to pull data from the study and also put it into the context of larger or external you know, kinds of uh, elements that might influence the situation. Uh, she encourages us to identify the human elements and the non-human elements. So here, there are a number of uh, human elements in this study, but for this brief uh, discussion of the findings, I pointed to the pull is stronger than push. Now, in the literature about entrepreneurship, the language of pull and push is common for describing the motivation for entrepreneurs to go into business for themselves. They are either pulled by a strong idea, a opportunity to pursue, or they are pushed out of the workforce. So while both factors were discussed by these participants, um, by far, the top pull, the top motivation described was for creative, flexible, and meaningful work experience. On the non-human elements, we have, of course, the technologies, which I've just uh, explained from the other map. Uh, under the collective human elements, we found that while each of these participants were very independent-minded, and really uh, confident about their own uh, ideas and directions. They also really value learning from and collaborating with 
their respective networks. And as you could see from the positional map, they really uh, thought through and distinguished between their more immediate networks, their uh, kind of broader networks, and, and then the general public. Uh, in the category from this uh, methodology called implicated actors, um, we're asked to think about the kinds of people who are perhaps you know indirect. Now, I did not interview customers uh, here, but they are certainly implicated in the success of the entrepreneurs. Without customers or clients, then you know there'd be no business. But here we found that the entrepreneurs reported repeated business, referral from customers. Uh, and long-term relationships with some of their core uh, clients or, uh, or customers you know, for a period of time. And it seemed that these customers you know, really made a choice in doing business with uh, small or independent entrepreneurs and you know, perhaps you know, really uh, preferred that um, source for you know whatever the product or service they were purchasing of course you know we don't have uh, the data from those um, actors but um, they are implicated in this situation so when we look at the discursive constructions um, it was clear that relationships matter um, and relationships are sustained by um, these communications that were made very strategically. So in the discursive constructions of non-human elements, um, the choice of the technology uh, depended on the nature of the relationship and whether the communication was you know, to the public or some degree of um, private. So you know, we saw that pieced out a little bit more detail in the positional map. Uh, in the technology uh, area, they distinguish between uh, kind of tasks, technologies they needed to get the tasks done, and the technologies they used uh, to communicate and build their networks. Um, economic elements. Now here you know, is another area where the external influence on this situation uh, you know, may or may not have some implication for um, how we can understand it. Uh, and here, within the theme of, of pull and push, um, I found it interesting that these participants basically chose entrepreneurism. Um, even though there's been a lot of upheaval in the job market, um, they really were not pushed out of jobs. You know, a couple of them continue to have other jobs, um, but you know, it was not um, a situation where they had to start their business because they were unable to participate in the workforce. Um, another economic element was that they are able to use all of these free and cheap tools to get started. Um, and another point I categorized here, uh, I thought, you know, was another interesting common theme across the participants, which was that even when they had opportunities to grow, the growth is important and there's you know, different perspectives uh, from uh, emerged from across the participants. But when it, when it came down to it, uh, creative and quality control was you know, even more important than growing and, and making more money. So even though they would like to grow and be successful and make more money, um, not at the expense, so to speak, of their own uh, control and, and what it meant to put their own names on the work they did. Uh, other external elements, in addition to the economic elements, are the socio-cultural elements. And here, again, in all of these themes, offer you know, lots of opportunities for further exploration. I'm just giving you a very quick synopsis. But one of the themes uh, from sociocultural elements is that you know, these entrepreneurs, even the solo business uh, women, 
really had a commitment to reach out and um, help to develop other entrepreneurs. And another socio-cultural element that I think you know is an area for further study is that you know there's a kind of general stereotype and and a kind of a repeated point throughout the literature about women entrepreneurs generally, not e entrepreneurs, but just generally women entrepreneurs, is that women choose to be entrepreneurs because they want to balance uh, family uh, responsibilities with work. And while that came out with, uh, you know, to, to a small extent, it was certainly not a major theme in this study. Uh, the desire for flexibility uh, really involved uh, an interest in being able to do other kinds of things or travel or um, uh, live a, a particular lifestyle that was possible as an entrepreneur. Um, we looked at the temporal elements uh, in the positional map. But the spatial elements, again, another you know, strong motivational factor here, um, being, as one participant put it, uh, geographically untethered, uh, was a priority and uh, a real a motivational factor for many of these entrepreneurs. By starting a business that could run online, um, they were not uh, tied you know, to a particular location. So I'm going to just share a couple of quotes from the participants around some of these themes. So in terms of the push and the pull, uh, one participant said, uh, I, I was disgusted working for a large corporation. I just couldn't stomach it any longer. Now I get to do what I want and I get to say. Another said,